and he also directed the Nigerian Railway Corporation Management to speedily repair the damaged lines. And these are things that are within the purview of the gentlemen who hold these functions anyway. So when I hear things like the president has given directives, so if he didn't give the directives, what would these people be doing? Then, of course, I would also concede that maybe there were some instructions that were given in private that might not have been made public. But I think that there's a need to reassure the public that this is not going to be business as usual. The usual one page, two, four paragraph response has directed this and directed that. Uh, because it's a tragedy. Uh, it, it crept on us yet, yesterday. The magnitude of it didn't get, I didn't get to feel it until later in the afternoon, you know, with the response on the social media. Mm. And of course, that irresponsible statement from one Twitter handler who, who you know, there was a doctor yeah. uh, who was on the train and mm. was tweeting and some full-grown adult found it kind of funny. And if you want to know how, how decadent our Nigerian society is, if you want to know how far down we have gone in morals, you need to go to the social media. The kind of reasoning you... If you want to know how bad our education itself has been, go to Facebook, go to Twitter, read what some people say, and you'll be amazed about the country that you're living in. Somebody is tweeting that she's being attacked on a train, and you... I don't want to mention his name. I don't want to give him any, any recognition of any sort. Now respond and you start cracking up. It's quite unfair, quite unreasonable, very sad, very very sad. If we don't do a moral and and we're still going to do the value whatever I said. I'm just trying to figure it together. But if we don't start making a concerted effort, a definite effort, a focused effort on realigning people's thoughts, this country is not going anywhere. We're going to get into deep trouble. And we're back to the story. The puncher says how the victims, you know, said that they saw hell and how relatives have, you know, besieged the train stations because some people were actually taken away. Uh, I think the MD of the Bank of Agri Greek um, is nowhere to be found as we speak. The reps have also moved in. They've summoned the NSA service chiefs, the IG and the DSS boss. And, of course, we won't know what is being discussed at that level. All said and done, I think we should brace. I'm, I'm a realist. I'm sorry. I'm not given to being uh, to to being polite about things like this. I think we need to brace ourselves. This is a new phenomenon in this country. I was a full-grown adult when I'm robbery. People won't believe that there was a time in this country when there was no armed robbery. It was after the Civil War. You know, not long after, there was no armed robbery. The armed robbers that you had were those who jumped the fence to, if you left your clothes on the whatever of a night, or those who would, like, uh, they would pour the, you know, fleet now has become a generic word. Mm. So I was trying not to use it because of the brand name. Yeah. But they would pour chloroform in the room while you are sleeping because everybody slept with their windows open. Mm. There was no AC then. But overnight, we just saw armed robbery. They first of all shot the first set at Babbage way back then. But since then, look at what we have. So this, this might be with us for a very, very long time, which puts some responsibility on us to be careful how we move around, even in our own country. I'm going to plead with everybody and for all of us to be security sensitive and know that any security breach that you overlook might come back to haunt you.